Hello, this is Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide special Christmas bonus edition where we offer tips to help you survive and thrive. Not every tip will match your needs and experience, so just pick the ones you're able to apply to make a positive difference for you over the festive period. So, on with the show. Welcome to the latest episode of Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide with me, Paul Flower, and Dr. Gary Wood. May I wish you the compliments of the season and a Merry Christmas. Oh, beautifully done. Yeah, so what are we talking about then? Uh, We are talking about Christmas and the effect it has on people's happiness and what you can do to mitigate that effect or to amplify it if should you need to do so. Yeah, so in other words, Surviving Christmas was the the working title. It was. Yes, so let's... And it's another bonus because we're giving you many gifts this month. Yes. This is just one of them. Christmas is a time where where people who normally don't spend time with each other are thrown together. You think, ah, that's why I don't spend so much time with you the rest of the year. So I thought (laughs) it's useful to have a few pointers of how to make the best of the situation, how to practice some of the skills that we've been talking about in the podcast, and how some of these things might overlap with the seasonal uh, affective disorder bonus podcast. It's bonuses, bonuses, bonuses. Bonuses all the way. Yes, yeah, so you'd think we were bankers, wouldn't you? Yes. Close. Right. So... <laughs> <laughs> Number one, get some perspective. It's usually only a day. So you see people... That sounded like a command, didn't it? You know, get some perspective. Well, it does. It, you, you see people out you th- and you're thinking, everything's closed for just a day now. And they're shopping as though it's Armageddon. And it, yeah. it's, everybody's going mad and jostling. And you think What I really dislike and... Um... In the past couple of years, what I've what I've tended to do is any company that sends me an email on Christmas Day advertising whatever it is they want to advertise, I yeah. immediately unsubscribe from their emails. Because if they can't take a day off once a year, then, you know, what hope is there for mankind? It's it's a very bad message. I mean, I have the same when I, you know, I see the first person the first person who sends me Christmas greetings, you know, it's usually a you know, somebody in August. Happy Christmas, I'm thinking, (laughs) get over it. I think Christmas should start 1st of December. That's it. No messing around. I'm I'm with you, and I don't want to hear any Christmas songs before the 1st of December. No. I rarely want to hear any Christmas songs after the 1st of December either, but I know I'm going to get them either way, so there's it is. I wish it could be Christmas every day. No. Right. No. (laughs) Number two, then. Is, there are some great Christmas songs, by the way, these days. But um, Greg, you, you have Greg Lake is my favourite. Yes, we won't have to play the PRS on just uh, I will, uh, one note. Uh, that one, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> to get through Christmas, take the lead from kids. So no matter how expensive the toy, they'll always end up playing with the box. Be like kids. Just be Oh, I can't say play with your box now because it just it's just spoilty, doesn't it? Sounds it? wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Be inquisitive. Yes, be inquisitive. Just you know, just basically amuse yourself with you know. It doesn't have to be massively expensive. Use your imagination. It's the way, imagination. Yeah. And it's the human creativity that's often the most important. And Try so- and buy thoughtful gifts, not expensive gifts. <laughs> although this episode is slightly too late for that. But right, three. Practice gratitude and don't criticize. So if you're on Christmas Day and the spread. Sh- are as hard as bullets just eat uh so (laughs) (laughs) just just eat them them. yes think about everything as a gift and if something's not quite right somebody's gone to the trouble of preparing you food okay it's not perfect what does your criticism do does it take you back in time and make those sprouts better no you just make the person feel bad and next year they'll probably put glass in them, right? Yeah. Or next <laughs> but year. The rain is absolutely lashing down against my windows, by the way. So I oh, apologise yes. for that background noise. In- Inconsonance. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so don't let on Christmas Day or during Christmas, don't let the first thing come out of your mouth be a criticism. This is really important for for people like me who jump into criticism and you know. Pause and take note of the fact that somebody has, has tried to make things great for you today. For a while, I was, well, I'm still probably, I, I, I don't know whether I class myself as a Taoist, but if somebody's prepared food for you and you're very critical and picky, it's deemed to be un- very, very unspiritual. And I quite like that idea. Just swallow it. I mean, if it's got, you know, if it's totally inedible, wait for the person to acknowledge it and then... And feed know, it to the dog. Yeah. And, and then, you know, if they start joking about it, you can have a joke about it. 
Yeah. So if somebody's getting on your nerves or somebody's saying something, count to 10 or have a bet beforehand. So if you've got a relative that's coming or you know they're going to be critical or know going to be difficult, have a bet beforehand. What's the first thing that Uncle Percy's going to moan around? Have a bit of bet. Have a bet on it. Uh, not encouraging yeah. gambling normally, just in this seasonal capacity. No, it's like Uncle Percy bingo. Yes. Number five, breathe. That's it. Uh, when we're stressed, we raise our shoulders and our breath becomes more shallow. Drop your shoulders, take some deep breaths, and you will interrupt the stress cycle. Six, go for a walk. So if it really gets too much, just go out, but make it spontaneous. Or wouldn't it be lovely to go for a walk, even if it's peeing down? Right. Like it is here. Yeah. Yeah, break it up. You don't want to be indoors with the same people who are annoying you, and they're annoying you because they're, they're your nearest and dearest, and they're the people that are most actually like you. And uh, because you don't like yourself, that's why you don't like them either. Oh, very deep, very telling. Somebody who doesn't like to give anything away. Was like, <laughs> oh, I'm make, making a note of that for the next episode. Right then, uh, a bit of give and take. Don't be the person who sits there in the corner like a blancmange, expected to be waited on. Even if it's just an offering to make a cup of tea, just the offer is sometimes important. And similarly, don't be the person who just magically transforms into Cinderella and has to do everything for everybody. And You know, it should be give and take. People should be mucking in. It should be, you know, a... It should be a communal effort. That's it. A commune, that's the word I was struggling you've, to you've spit got, out. You know, you've got together with... with people so you know make the effort to be communal you are part of that community yeah uh number eight is all about diet lots of people get guilty over christmas and the festive period because they say i'm eating all this food and people in the world are starving but to recognize it is the only feast in the season and all cultures tend to have a feast so don't be guilty first of all and then we were talking about it was probably way back number three on uh, meaning and we talked about hedonism and the idea that hedonism wasn't get bladdered and, you know, just gorge yeah. yourself. It's everything in moderation. So have enough so you feel satisfied, but not enough to know that you're going to be ill and regret it. Yeah, or put yourself into a coma for the whole afternoon. You yeah. might want to sleep through the, the big Christmas epic because they're never as quite as good as you expect them to be. But really, you know, it's not good for you, is it? And you're going to regret it. So, nine, if you're on your own at Christmas, which a lot of people are, so for some people it's a dire time. It's going to be lonely this Christmas. Yes. Uh, so to recognise it is only one day, to do some of the things we've mentioned on the list, but also to be kind to yourself, to plan to pamper yourself, to reflect, to take stock, to focus on gratitude and to make plans. So you might say, you, know, you might say I've got Christmas on my own. I'm going to sit down. I'm, I've got me treats in me food and I'm going to plan for things to be better. I'm going to plan yeah. some goals for this year. It could be a personal development day. But also, you know, as, as we said with the, the in the sad bonus episode, you know, there are other people that are experiencing the same Christmas that you are. And, you know, there are ways of reaching out to them as well. You know, so I think yeah. there are hashtags and stuff on Twitter that yeah. people, you know, join in on to kind of have conversations with each other because they're they're on their own. You know, some people like being on their own. That's all well and good. But if you're feeling it because Christmas is, gives you this image of everybody getting together, then, you know, there are people you can reach out to that can help. Yeah, it's it's a good point. Reaching out. So, and volunteering as well. I don't know what the situation will be like volunteering this year, but in the past, you know, people have volunteered. So, you know, if it's it's a, it's a way to spend time with people yeah. to do something positive. And, um, you know, make a commitment to do good for the whole of 2022. Yeah. You know, why it, not? That could be part of the goal. Yeah. Hmm. And then also to take a moment to recognise that this time of year will also have an element of sadness. Yeah. So you, we, we you might, reflect on those that, that you've missed. And... Yeah. Those you've missed, those of you've lost. So you can raise a glass to them if you are partial to raising glasses. It can be a glass of anything. It can. And you can think about what you might do in the coming year to honour them in some way. So so I don't yes. know. All of my books, I have mentioned my grandparents in them because my nan, I thought I learned so much about compassion and kindness 
and humour. And my granddad uh, was an avid reader. And I think my passion for reading came from him. So I make a point of always honouring them in some way. So I'm not saying you have to write a book, but you might want to think about what can I do to honour those people? How have they inspired me? And what can I do to honour their memory to move forward in a positive way? What can I yeah. do? In the and future? it keeps their memory alive at an important time of year that, you know, you, you will reflect on the fact that they're not here to enjoy it with you, but you can keep it alive for them. Yeah. Uh, so that was number 10 and then 11 and 12. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, you could have said it was a top 10. It didn't even need to be 12 this time around. No, it didn't. It didn't. But yeah, I thought the 12... We, we had the sad 12 because they yeah, fitted in I with thought the, it was the 12 nice days of another, Christmas. That's it then. So if you, yeah, think of 11, if you can think of 11 and 12. So that was pretty much... I would say number 11 is not to feel guilty about... you know, Like you say, it is one day. And if you're going to be cooped up with relatives who... It might be great to see them, but then it might... You know, you might tire of that experience experience after a short while but don't feel guilty about it you know that you are doing something that's good for them and for you so you know don't get the guilt on yeah so we've got get some perspective it's only a day take the lead from kids use your imagination play with the box practice gratitude don't let the first thing come out of your mouth be criticism count to 10 if ever you feel a bit stressed with people close your eyes and count to 10 yes yeah. the third song title i've dropped in drop your shoulders and breathe go for a walk remember it's a matter of give and take and it should be a, it should be a communal event don't binge out on the drunk food but don't be guilty about having a feast just have enough to feel satisfied and you know but not enough to make you ill if you're on your own at christmas be kind to yourself think about what you can do to pamper yourself reflect take stock focus on gratitude make plans set some goals reach out to other people and take a moment to recognize that there might be loss and what you can do to celebrate people who are not here brilliant yeah and tell guilt to do one yes and yo ho ho yo ho ho that's it <laughs> yo ho we're back to the sailors again um <laughs> is that a sailor oh. we yeah we yeah yo ho is pirate i guess uh, um we hope you know, it's been a she sea shanty type of year which is easy enough for you to say so uh, there was our contribution to sea shanties this year you've just reminded me i went to a pantomime when i was five years of age and the musical act got us to sing the song Susie Susie sitting in the shoe shine shop okay that's good she sits and shines and shines and sits and shines and sits and sits and shines while sitting in the shoe shine shop <laughs> And you, I've never, I have never heard that before. Yes. Where, where so, did you go to this pantomime? It's Susie, Susie, sitting in the shoe shine shop. Well, you could imagine lots of five-year-olds <laughs> weren't exactly getting it right, were they? Those were the days. But uh, I, I came away as a five-year-old thinking, I'm going to learn that song. Uh, and now I can, sit gonna... and sh- I can sit and shine and shine and sit and shine and sit and sit and shine. <laughs> and I dare you to try it. No. I do. It'd be too many bleeps. Okay then. I'm afraid. Happy, uh, see, happy Christmas, goodwill seasons, thingies, and etc. Yes. Yes. I really practice that, over. can't you tell? Yeah. War yeah. is over if you want it. Yes. <laughs> yes. We Don't... hope you have the merriest of Christmases, and if you're listening to this after Christmas, we hope you had the merriest of Christmases, and you're looking forward to our New Year special, which unsurprisingly is going to be about New Year, New You syndrome, yep. and uh, what, what you can do to combat that, because that's a load of all nonsense for starters. Oh, that's it, Jim George. Been... Okay, no. off we go. <laughs> that was good. That was and is Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide, with Paul Flower and me, Gary Wood. We shared our tips of how to survive and thrive over the festive period that can be used pretty much any time of the year as well. If you like the show, do remember to subscribe, like and tell others. And if you've really enjoyed it, you can support the show at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Skeptic's Guide. Coming up next, Happiness Goals and Resolutions.